Hello, welcome. My name is Grandmaster Daniel Gormali. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Hometown Hero. So my plan is to eventually go around some towns, some places and take on people in their backyard. And we're also going to be doing quizzes on this channel. We're going to be, this is going to be a very exciting channel. Uh, but the first game, the first thing I want to talk about is um, what it's like to analyze your games. Um, so we're going to talk about annotations, analyzing your games with a computer. Why it's so important to give valuations and annotate your games in the correct manner. But I think it's very important to look at your games and annotate your games. So this game was played in Northumbria Masters. Actually, only yesterday I played this, this game. Um, sorry, it was a couple of days ago. So that would have been Monday. I was playing against Peter Sowery, who I believe is an FM, but certainly I think in many ways I am strength. And I think he would have got I am had it not been for the fact that um, he obviously was a full time, had a full time job, a uh, very decent player. And you kind of sense, I kind of sense over the ball when I was playing him that, you know, I could sense his strength almost. I could sort of sense that he was a good player. I played him many times. Most of the games have been a struggle. Uh, lost to him at the foreign sale many years ago. Just shows how far back we both go. This would have been back in like about 20 years ago in a C3 Sicilian. I remember him saying to me after the game, uh, you made an old man very happy. And he was quite young compared to what he is now. So yeah, I don't know how he would say it, how he would say it now. So anyway, let's go on with the game. So this is played in round eight. And I was tied for lead at that point with Stephen Jones. So I was white and the, the game went, let's just get the moves. I played D4, D6, Knight F6. And yeah, so when he went D4, I went D4, I prepared for this game. Um, so I basically prepared for it the night before, the, the previous round finished about 7, got back, probably got back about sort of 9 o'clock in the evening, knowing that you're going to play the next day at 12. I uh, had to prepare for this game, also had to prepare for my potential round 9 opponent, because I knew I wouldn't have a long time between the, the rounds, bear in mind it's two rounds a day, I wouldn't have a long time between the rounds to then prepare for a potential round 9 opponent. So I also had to protect <coughs> prepare for that um, so yeah I didn't have much time to prepare when I prepared I generally found that Sauray was playing d5 but he moves around a lot in the opening in this uh, tournament he was playing knight f6 a lot and playing the king's indian but he played d6 now I found out later from Keith Arkell that actually uh, he played d6 against uh, Keith but Keith went for c4 systems d6 I'm going to go e4 I'm going to take the centre so again, yeah, he plays a perk. It's quite a solid opening. Um, actually, Gary Kasparov, I think when he was 17, I was reading this book by Jenna Sazonko, and he said when he was 17, Gary Kasparov formulated this way of talking about the openings, and he said that um, after the move, for example, E4, uh, Black has three different ways of playing. You can either play E5, he said that's the most correct way to play, or c6 preparing d5, very correct. Uh, black cannot really be much worse. He said semi-correct openings and moves like c5. How do we get rid of these stupid arrows? Yeah, c5 is semi-correct, e6 as well. But um, instead of e6, yeah, moves like g6, it says maybe slightly dubious openings, you know, so they're not really playable at a high level. And the same with like the perk. Um, you know, b6, obviously, possibly even worse. And maybe moves as well like knight f6, Alakine's defense, slightly dubious, because white is able to control the center. So useful little bit of information, anyway. Let's get on with the game. So in this position I went knight f3, uh, sorry, played bishop g7, 
at h3. Yeah, and black has many ways to play here. For example, you can play the move a6, which is quite reasonable with the idea of b5. There's also lines where black can play immediately e5. Uh, but Sare played uh, the most normal way to play, which is to slowly develop in the center and play this move e5. It's quite a good move, actually. Now, white can sometimes take here, I think. Yeah, I can take here and then probably play queen d2 with the idea of letting it play in bishop h6. <coughs> but it's not so clear how white gains the attack in that case. You get bishop h6 in. So what? So instead I decided to keep the tension. I played the move rookie one, very natural move rookie eight, and then I went queen d2. So in this position, I felt like, yeah, so I was trying to uh, calculate uh, this position before I played queen d2 and also while I was waiting for him to move. The move that I feared during the game and I wasn't sure how to refute was to move a d5. And um, that is actually quite a testing move for white to face. So the idea is you're just going to hoover up, all, hoover off all the pieces in the center, all the pawns in the center. And essentially make a draw because I really need to win this game. I was like a level with Stephen Jones who's having an excellent run at the moment. Um, I was um, half point ahead of Icelandic GM. So I felt like if even one of those two won, they might be in control of the tournament rather than myself. Uh, Jones, if he was to go win-win, I would have to go win-win just to match him. So uh, d5 worried me a little bit because there were variations like, of course, you could lose as well, like e, d, e4, you might not even get a draw. So for some reason, it's not allowing me to do the, the um, anyway. But yeah, so this position, the problem with d5 is uh, when I investigate this, so most of this game I've annotated without an engine. But when I investigate this game, uh, this position, I did, I did check this position, and uh, it's still theory, or, or nobody's played d5 here. Uh, because it's actually, rather, I've given it as a question mark. So, again, on the annotation, I think it's very important to annotate your games. Um, and it's very important to give evaluation marks to moves. On here, I've said this is an interesting move, it probably isn't, it's probably just like something of a mistake. The problem is that white takes here. Now, if black was to take back, uh, white ends up getting some kind of advantage. So you have to play in this position. Uh, so, so my analysis went like this. And at the board, I was thinking, well, 94, 95 is, is fine for black. But there's something stronger. What you play is you play a bishop to a g5. Big problem for black now. You're going to have to be forced to move the queen, and then I'm going to take on e4, uh, either with a knight or the rook, and uh, start to get a big advantage, probably take the knight actually, and could end up being serious problems for black. So you can't really play like this, it's black. Yeah, so d5 was interesting, but a little bit too much. It doesn't really fit in with black strategy, which is play d6 and e5. Either, you know, it's a move you have to calculate because it's a very forced move, uh, but it doesn't quite work. So the other move, other than what he played in the game, was to take on d4. Now, I thought if he took on d4, I was going to take out the knight. And I calculated two moves. Well, really, I only calculated one move here, but it's, uh, the, best, the best move according to theory is knight c5. Now, I thought... A line like bishop h6 was clearly better, but when you check with the theory, it's, it says that these black's position is actually okay here. Um, I slightly prefer white, even so. Uh, but, um, yeah, the computer says that the game is about equal. It's quite interesting, because to me it looks clearly better for white. The other thing I was trying to work out was his move knight e5, which, again, very, very forcing. Because black's given up some control in the center, it makes sense to follow it up with forcing moves. Bishop f1, now the idea is to play f4, and then kick the knight away, the knight's going to lose time. If the knight drops back, you probably just play a move like f3 and you're better. So I was wondering whether he could 
even consider going completely bonkers like this. And there's certain players that you play against who might well play like this. Complete maniacs who might just go bishop takes h3 and say, look, my idea is if you take here, I'm going to go c5, hit the knight. If the knight moves, and then knight f3 is good. And if f4, we can take on d4 into mezzo. It's also looking very good for black. But the problem is after bishop h3, obviously white is going to f4. Hit the knight. Bishop is not going to drop back. He's just going to take on e5. Now, black could argue here that he's got some kind of compensation with the fact that you've got... How many pawns have we got here? So black currently has seven pawns against six. So it's not enough pawns, really. Um... And the only danger for white is maybe there's some kind of knight h5 takes f4 might happen. But I think if white played this this uh, position accurately, he'd probably win the game. Um, yeah, if you play the next few moves accurately. But it's something to slightly consider. There are some maniacs who would probably play like this. But I don't think the engines would be particularly impressed. I've not checked this. <coughs> but generally they go knight c5. White could even consider f3 after knight c5 as well. Yeah, so going back. Um, Sarri played b5, which I think is a good move. I now decided, right, you know, I don't really want to have to calculate all these different variations with takes, knight e5. Maybe b4 he'll play. So I decided to take, resolve the tension in the center. Um... Yeah, so he could take back the pawn, actually. I think that is the most popular choice. He took back with a knight. I took back. And he took back the rook. Quite confidently, actually. and I, I felt like he was reasonably confident at this, this point in the game. And um, I felt slightly uncomfortable because it wasn't, wasn't exactly clear to me what white should do. What, how white should play. You know, this is a typical middle game situation you're faced with. If you play the next few moves well, you're probably going to have a good position and you're probably going to have very good chances to win the game. Uh, but if you don't play it well, uh, then black could easily at least equalize the game and maybe start to get ahead. So I felt like this was a really critical moment of the game. And I felt kind of very nervous at this point in the game. I just felt a little bit, um, you know, anxious because obviously the tournament situation was on the line. Uh, I did consider as well that he could take back the pawn. Now the problem with pawn takes is you go a4 and then you drop the knight back. And I think these variations work out quite well for white. Suddenly black has a little bit of weaknesses here. You know, the c5 is a little bit weak. You know, you can imagine a situation where knight goes back to c1 to b3. So I don't think this is a very good variation for black. I think you should avoid that. <coughs> So I think his rook takes was, was, was fairly reasonable. Uh, so here, again, I'm thinking prophylactically. I'm thinking, you know, get your prophylactic head on, your Mark Dvoretsky head on. The famous Russian um, trainer, Mark Dvoretsky, talked a lot about prophylactic thinking, the importance of prophylactic thinking when making middle game decisions. And I, I think he would have probably... Quite possibly, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I think quite possibly would at least consider the move a3 here. The idea is that black wants to play b4, undermine the defense of b4, but by playing a3, if black goes a5 and b4, then when I trade on b4, a8 is going to be hanging at the end. So a3 is a good move. Uh, black played bishop b7, again, very logical follow-up. Wants to uh, hint at maybe going a6, c5, and then creating further pressure on e4. I felt that was quite a good move by my opponent. But I played a move f3, which again, I think was probably a good move. Um, I, yeah, this was again a difficult decision because I could play more aggressively. f3 is a little bit slow. And ideally speaking, you wouldn't play f3 in combination with the move h3. You'd probably play f3 if you haven't gone h3 because by playing f3, you're now weakening the g3 square. But I couldn't see anything else that looked that convincing to me. I thought if I play a move like bishop h6, 
Um, he can maybe trade and play queen e7 or queen f8. I didn't really feel that that was enough for. I mean, there are some there are some um, arguments for playing like this to white because I feel like once you exchange the dark square bishops, obviously the dark squares around the black king are long term or a long term weakness. Um, you know, and a lot of the tension has been taken out of the position. The, the bishop on g7 was potentially a very destructive piece for white to deal with on the long diagonal, even though white has castle kingside. <coughs> So possibly this would have been a better way to play again. I'm not really sure, but I think I was a little bit afraid of moves like Queen B6, just delaying F4. Doesn't seem that obvious to me what White should play. Another option is maybe Knight E7. With the idea that F4, you end up trapping your own Queen. So yeah, again, very interesting middle game, and you could spend hours analysing this position, work, trying to work it out, or you could stick it on an engine, and the engine would probably tell you what the best move is in 0 0.2 seconds, right? Or what it thinks is the best move. Uh, this is why I'm trying to analyse these games myself without an engine, I think that's a very important point to make, that you should try to analyse your games without an engine, because by doing so, um, you're using this trial and error method by you're trying to find the best move and if you're wrong you go back and you try again and you know and I think that way you improve your your ability to analyze um, another option that white could have played was bishop d4 and then maybe play aggressively with f4 but I think that black can handle this one problem is maybe c5 for white and then we just stay back and then if bishop bishop takes we have bishop c3 and e4 is going to be weak at the end uh, the other option is like knight b5 is bishop b2 and then just drop the bishop back is is another possibility although i have noticed there's knight d6 here but i don't think that quite works because uh black has c4 at the end so stuff like this is possible Um, it does look more aggressively, more aggressive to play bishop d4 rather than limply playing f3. But f3, I felt, has kept all my options open. Uh, the queen can go to f2, the bishop can go to d4 later, maybe in some variations, or the bishop can go to h6. f3, I wasn't totally happy about it. Actually, well, now looking at it, I wonder if there's crazy ideas like here. Um, I did consider knight h5 at some moment actually, but he uh, maybe even playing something like this and provoking white to take him is not completely stupid and just going all in on the dark squares. I don't know. Um, or potentially maybe just going for queen h4 immediately. I think the only problem is that you might walk into a g4 here. And then you have forced to waste time. So probably knight h5 is too much. Interesting idea. Maybe black could just move the rook back here. He played queen c7. And I played uh, move bishop f1. I want to meet d5 with bishop uh, f4 or bishop d4. Hit the rook and then take on d5. I think I'm a lot better. Uh, so he moved the rook back. Understandable decision. I play rook d1 again. If he moves this rook to d8, I might take on a7. Um, even though the bishop gets temporarily trapped, it's a lot of material to give to give up in lines like this. Yeah, the bishop is a little bit shaky here, but I feel like this shouldn't work out for black. It's just given up too many uh, pawns uh, just for the temporary uh, capture of a piece or trapping of a piece. So, yeah, going back, anyway, he played rook d8. And I played bishop h. No, I didn't play bishop h. Maybe I should have played bishop h6, actually. Bishop h6 is probably a good move. I played uh, queen f2. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking maybe I should have gone bishop h6, actually. But this was the moment to go bishop h6, because uh, after bishop h6, your clear threat is to take on g7 and go f4. And it seems like white's a lot better. 
So potentially that was an improvement. So we could, you know, if you're annotating this game and you're trying to evaluate this game, you could say Bishop A6, exclamation mark. Um, white is clearly better. Queen F2, slightly inconsistent move. Uh, the reason why Queen F2 is slightly inconsistent, I feel, is that white should really be trying to attack on the king side and not really worry too much. But I kind of had this idea of hitting A7. And I saw variations like a5, bishop to b6. And I got tempted. He went knight d7, which was a good move. So now if I take on, if I realise if I take on a7 now, rather than going c5, which would run into knight b5, he's got this first. And uh, the bishop ends up uh, dropping off the board. So that would not be good for white, I don't think. By the way, if you wanted to try and find improvements, uh, you know, over this, that'd be fine and put them in the comments below because, as I said, I've not done this with an engine. So it wouldn't surprise me if there are very good improvements here for, for, for both sides that you're able to find. But I went bishop d4, which looked a very natural move. I was hoping he would trade, I would take you back with a rook, probably tab out a rook actually, and then go rook d1 and pressure d6. So he played the bishop back to f8. Understandable decision. Try to keep attention. This is a move that irritated me. I was, uh, yeah. I kind of felt like this is another indication why Sarri is a good player because he's playing these kind of irritating moves. You know, that you kind of, he's not really fitting in with my strategy. So I think this is maybe a critical moment. I could have considered a move f4, but I just felt like, um, yeah, I wasn't sure if if allowing black to play c5 and maybe weakening e4 was in my favor or not. After uh, f4, he could play rook e8, for example, or maybe he could play c5 immediately. c5 runs into knight b5. Okay, so he can't play c5 because then something like this would just be very good for white. So, yeah, I wondered about either a6 a6 is also a line, but a6, f5, and it's starting to get very sharp. Yeah, and something like this, again, you know, you need to check with an engine to say, is white better here or not? I feel like this is slightly iffy for black, though. This position feels slightly iffy because it's very squeezed for space. But at the same time, I don't see a concrete breakthrough. So going back to the game, yeah, he could also play rook e8 as well. Yeah, it was also another line, and it's not so clear. Um, instead of a6, yeah, rook e8 was another line, and after rook e8, who knows what's going on. So, possibly f4 was better than what I played. I played um, knight e2. Another option was rook d2. That was uh, maybe the safe choice. I played knight e2. As soon as I played knight e2, I was unhappy with that move. Um, I saw his response. I was hoping he wouldn't play it. He was get, starting to get short of time. Uh, so I was hopeful that he wouldn't uh, play this position very well. But unfortunately for me, he did. Uh, he played the move C5, which is a good move. I believe it's a good move. Even though it gives me the D5 square potentially for the knight. Um, Force the advantageous that is in some in some scenarios that would force the advantageous exchange of the knight for the bishop and gain the bishop pair i feel like c5 is just a move that he really needs to play uh, that bishop's just too strong on d4 so c5 is an excellent move now if i go bishop c3 the problem was i thought you could play a5 this is why i wanted to play now i think it gets a weaker player i might have gambled and played bishop c3 thinking that they're not going to be good enough to find a5 but I felt like Saure, there's no way that Saure would miss this move a5. Um, I just felt like he's too good a player. And a5 is kind of annoying for, for White. Suddenly he's threatening b4 kicking, you know, and b3 doesn't look very convincing. Didn't look very convincing to me. Looked a bit too slow. So I decided to drop the bishop back to e3. He played bishop g7, c3. He went rook e8, and I went knight f4, which is probably a good move. Uh, a6, yeah, so I'm hitting b5, so he has to take a move out to defend that pawn. 
and I went Queen D2, which I gave myself an exclamation mark. I said that was a good move. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Obviously, sometimes you can give yourself... I mean, the other move was Knight D5. Yeah, sometimes you give yourself exclamation marks for moves, and they don't turn out to be that good, but possibly Queen D2 is best. Yeah, this was the other line, but I wasn't sure in this uh, variation whether white was better or not. So I went Queen D2. <coughs> and he played uh, Bishop E5, which again is a good move. So yeah, Knight D5. Uh, yeah, this is the other variation. Knight D5. Bishop G3. St something like this uh, could happen. And uh, maybe something like Rook E6. Maybe D5 was another option actually. Uh, going completely bonkers, but Probably d5 there was maybe too much. Yeah, maybe even d5. The more I think about it, maybe even something like this is also possible. And, um, yeah, maybe black is starting to take over. So th this, is another, this is another variation that uh, could end up backfiring for white. So it's kind of an, on a knife edge, this position. And um, he played... Um, Sorry, instead of, um, yeah, I played a more solid move. I didn't go knight d5, I went knight d3, which I think was a good move. Now, if I'd have had more points here, I might have just taken a repetition. I might, you know, because after, he could have maybe considered bishop g3, there was another option, but he went back, which is very sensible. And, um, oh yeah, but he didn't allow this repetition. He didn't even consider bishop e5. I think the problem with bishop e5 is I go knight g4. Now, if I exchange uh, the dark square bishop, I must be doing very well. I've got the dark square control. Uh, potentially, the black uh, king will get checkmated. And if he goes here, I go bishop g3. Feels very awkward for black. <coughs> because of the... Um, something like this. It just feels very, very uncomfortable for black. Queen is coming to g3. Um, maybe you could you could make an argument that something like this is defendable. Maybe knight goes to f6. I'm not sure, but it looks it kind of feels unpleasant, right? So he went back. Uh, he went sorry. He went with rook e6, which I think was a good move. And I played bishop f4, and he played knight e5. So originally I'd been intended uh, intending uh, bishop g3. And then play f4. And I thought, well, you know, get f5 in and I must have an attack. But the problem was that in this variation, he's, he's directly attacking e4. Um, so it, play becomes very direct. And the problem was I saw this variation, f5. In the game, I saw this variation. Now, again, it looks like white is doing very well. I'm threatening queen e8, uh, maybe knight g4, f6. The problem is, uh, when I saw his next move, I was like, right, I'm not going to go down this variation. He goes queen c6, hitting um, g2. I'm in big, big trouble. Uh, well, I can go queen f1. Maybe I'm okay, actually. But it, it doesn't. It doesn't, certainly doesn't feel like a winning try. Maybe a losing try. Queen, queen f1, he might go d5, d4 very quickly. So, yeah, I saw this variation. I thought, well, this doesn't look very convincing. Maybe you could play me like e5 takes, takes, exchange dark square bishops, give up pawn and go for some attack with 9g4. But it feels very vague. Uh, actually, now I think about it, he's also, yeah, he's also got this queen c6 here move, which, uh, hit move here, which also you'd have to consider. Uh, but I wondered after here whether white could play some weird stuff like this. <coughs> Which actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and might well just be good for white. But I think the problem is, yeah, you might have to deal with this other problem, which is that uh, none of these moves are forced for black. I mean, for example, maybe even a move like f5 is possible here, because white can't take on person. Oh, no, white can take on person, sorry. Uh, can white take on person? But then there's queen g3, right? And then you hit friendly mate. So no, you can't take... Yeah, so even a move like f5 is possible. Uh, ruling out knight g4, for example. Or this idea of just going queen c6, knight g4, maybe then going h5 or, or, or f5 or something. Something annoying. Um, 
So, yeah, I looked at all this, and I kind of... So I ended up playing a move, which I think was a mistake. And I probably should have gone knight g4. And we could get a variation like this, g5. And I think white's position is reasonably promising. And the idea is to go g3 and bishop h3. But instead I play the counterintuitive move, bishop e5, which I think was a mistake. Um, although it worked out in the game. Now, I think he should take back the pawn. This is uh, really what I was expecting him to play. And I really don't think white has any advantage at all here. Um, maybe he was concerned about c4, but then queen b6. I'm not, yeah, and white can go knight g4, knight e3, but so what? Even if you get knight e5 in, black can always just take it off. I don't really see why white would be better there. Black's got the dark square bishop. White has a lot of weaknesses around the, the dark squares on the king side. So long term, I think that would have been quite quite good for black. Um, but instead, he took with a bishop, which I think was something of a mistake, but not certainly not a losing mistake, but practically not the best. <coughs> so I carried on. I carried on. This was my whole plan when I took on e5, was to go for this sharp attack. And, um, yeah, there were other tries around about here, but this is kind of like the critical position. I could have exchanged queens and, and won a pawn. And that probably would have been a sensible decision. Instead, I went queen h4. And uh, so my idea was really, I was kind of playing on his time trouble. He was getting very short of time. He probably had less than 10 minutes at this point. Um, I had a, probably about 20 minutes. I can't actually remember, but... Eventually, we both got very short of time because you don't get any increment after move 40. So we both played on increment. I nearly lost on time at one point later in the game. I was down to about 15 seconds for one move. So <coughs> it was a very tense game. But yeah, queen h4. Interesting move. Uh, the plan is to obviously go for f6. So if he takes on e4, it's a natural response. I just play the move f6. And I'm doing very well. I'm winning the piece. So that you can't play that variation. So the critical line that I considered in the game was bishop h, uh, bishop e5. And so now it gets very forcing. If I go f6, he goes rook e6. It's not clear where my attack's going. Um, although maybe then I could take on d5 now I think about it. But also the problem is that after f6 I also have to calculate... Oh no, bishop g3 doesn't work, right? Ah, so maybe I could go f6 and then take, right? Ah, oh, but then he's got bishop takes d5. And if I take with a the rook, then he can go check and then take here. So I take on d5. So actually, the more I think about it, yeah, why can't he just play this anyway? It's funny how long variations are bad variations because you, you, you go down one line and you think, well, this is obvious. And then when you when you, when you sort of like analyze it in more detail, you realize it's not that clear. Um, because the idea is, yeah, rook d5, bishop h2 is good for black. But there are moves like knight g4 here, which might well be good for white. Very, very messy and unclear unclear position. Um, not so clear what black should do. If black doesn't take on d5, the other, the other forcing variation I was considering was bishop h2, uh, king h1. Now, take on e1, uh, bishop g3, which at first looks winning, because if you move the queen, then f2 is dro dropping. But white plays queen f6 with the idea that if bishop takes f2, you go rook e7. And you either win the queen or you force checkmate. Um, yeah, and bishop h4 would just run into queen f7, so that wouldn't really help. So, yeah, going back to this position, after the move queen f6, the problem is I saw this in, a, in the game, and I saw that he had queen f4. And the idea is if you move the knight uh, to g4, then probably just e1 is hanging. And rook e7 can be met with rook f8. And how do I defend all this complex? I can't move the knight because f1 is hanging with mate. But I think I saw this far, and I saw that knight d3 I could play, and it was still okay, but then he goes queen f5. 
So this is a legitimate alternative for Black. They're just simply going... Um, in fact, that's kind of what I expected him to play. I expected him to play Bishop e5. I thought that was a critical move. Not exactly sure what the assessment is. The other move is just to take immediately. Um, oh, no, hang on. That was the main line, right? We just discussed that, yeah. Yeah, so very interesting variations. Um, maybe knight g4 here as well was also... Actually, knight g4 is also possible, right? A very interesting move. Yeah, maybe he rejected it because of knight g4. But then he can take on e4. This is a problem. And if I go f6, he goes rook e6. And no obvious way through for black. Uh, for white, I should say. So very, very murky position. He played rook e5, which is probably something of a mistake, or not the best. His idea was if I go f6, he goes rook h5. And that doesn't work out well for white at all because you're going to drop the f6 ball. Uh, but I, yeah, and his also idea was knight g4, rook e4. And again, there's no, you know, there's no breakthrough here for white. There's no clear way to break through. Uh, so, <coughs> but the problem was I just took on d5. This was a good move, actually, I think, or at least a good practical move, keeping it simple. And I think the best move was either to take with a bishop on d5 or take with a rook. But he ended up taking with a, a rook left foot. Yeah, I think bishop takes or rook takes would probably be okay for black. Probably not, maybe not rook takes because of rook e7. But, although still very murky, right? Because then he can go, maybe go queen d8 or something like this is possible. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So bishop. Yeah, no, sorry, that was the main line. Yeah, main line was rook takes because rook here is he can play this, and it's not so clear. He could also consider bishop takes. This is another possibility. Who knows what's happening here? I really don't know what's going on. I felt like somehow white should be better, but I didn't really. Oh yeah, this. Yeah, sorry. Actually, maybe this isn't so good because I think I can just play something like. I saw this line, a knight g4. This is why I calculated in the game. And if he goes queen e4, um, oh yeah, maybe he can still go queen e4 actually. Maybe f6. And somehow claim that I've got some attacking chances, or don't, don't really see. Oh no, there's a trick here. Yeah, like f6. Because you kind of want to go back to f8 with a bishop, right? You don't really want to go back to h8 because it just feels like your king's going to get squeezed or your bishop is buried. So you kind of want to do this. Problem is now I go check. You can't take because of the mate. You go here. Now I simply take it. And the bishop is overloaded. So I'm winning the pawn. Whether that win the game or not, I don't know. But it certainly looks very promising for white. So very interesting variations. He took on f5 with a rook. And um, I played queen to, no, sorry, I went d6. Yeah, I thought that was a mistake, actually, to allow this position after d6. <coughs> Although he certainly, he certainly uh, I wasn't sure if rook f5 was a mistake in the game, but after d6, queen e7, I felt like he was in big trouble. Because somehow his position is becoming disconnected. Uh, this pawn is suddenly massive on d6. Uh, he went here. I, I played bishop d3. Also, I was quite happy about that move. And the bishop is coming to e4 to really shut out this blockade. He needs his two bishops to contain my d port. So he went rook f6. And uh, I simply went bishop e4. I felt, like, I felt confident I was going to win the game at this point. Very tense game. But unfortunately for me, I was actually getting short of time myself. Uh, so um, even though I, I felt reasonably confident of winning the game, I was getting so short a time that, you know, because I was kind of nervous and I was trying to be too precise almost, uh, that I felt like, yeah, it was in danger of slipping away. And my advantage was in danger of slipping away, even though it looks like a huge advantage for white with his pawn on d6. I went queen b7, uh, which I was pretty happy with because I felt like he was in big trouble now. I felt like I'm threatening stuff like d7, followed by queen a8. 
Uh, and he doesn't have time to play me like bishop e5, trying to bring me king to g7. Because I simply go, well, probably I could go d7 anyway. But I go rook to f1. And after f5, I go queen d5, and the game is over. Uh, so he went rook b8, which is a good practical try. Now, I probably should have just taken the pawn on a6. The reason I didn't was because I was afraid of queen h4. But again, when you're analysing, you know, try and think a little bit further. If I'd have maybe fought a little bit um, deeper here, I would have realised that probably after queen c6, <coughs> black really doesn't have anything here. Um, I can re-coordinate with queen c7 and d7. I'm going to win the game. I went queen a7. He brought the rook back. I, felt, I think, yeah, it was kind of just desperation on his part because you don't want to lose another pawn. But the problem is moves like b4 are not going to work. b4, uh, probably lots of moves. d7, for example. I think I would have just gone d7. But you can also take and go c4. And these pawns are coming through. This is my annotation that white is winning in this position. I think that's pretty obvious. I'm just going to play c5 and win the game. So he played rook uh, to a8. I took on c5. He went queen h4. And yeah, again, knight f2, not a very good move. I should have just gone d7. The problem was after rook d8, I didn't under, I didn't realise how strong just simply going queen c8 was. It looks a bit slow because you're not immediately threatening to take on d8. Uh, but the problem is that black really has nothing here. And, um, you know, one idea is just to go knight f2, followed by uh, taking on e6 and just hoovering up. <coughs> so I think that was the simplest. I went rook, uh, queen. I was just trying to be as simple as possible. I went knight f2, which is probably good enough to win the game. And now this is where my memory starts getting. I'm having to. I, I lost the score sheet to this game, unfortunately. I don't. I can't seem to locate the score sheet to this game. So I'm having to memorize it. I probably threw it away in the hotel room. You know, assuming that the organisers would put out the game in PGM form later. They haven't done so yet. If you know the moves, if Sarah's watching, maybe he could tell me what the moves were. I'll, I'll start to forget the moves around about this point. I think he went Bishop F8, I went Queen C6. He went Rook D8. And now he played a move which I missed uh, completely. So clearly I'm threatening to go Rook E8 and invade. Maybe Rook E4 as well. He played Queen C4, I'd missed that move. I, I just overlooked that move. Very annoying move actually. Maybe queen b7 is still good. I don't know. Uh, but then, yeah, maybe queen, uh, queen b7 was actually simplest. Because thinking about it now, he can't even he can't even attack this pawn with a queen. So he's probably still in big trouble. But I took on c4, feeling that this must be a technically winning endgame. It was. Knight g4. He can't take on d7 because knight f6. I went rook b1. He played f6, so he can't play, for example, f5 because I go knight e5. In fact, knight e5 is a big threat to c6. So he has to slowly bring his king across. And um, the problem is that he can now win d7, but now this is technically winning with the knight. I could potentially have kept the rooks on. I thought about keeping the rooks on because... He was short of time, but I also thought, well, I'm getting short of time as well. So it doesn't really make, make much sense. You should feel confident the knight against Bishop Eddie is winning. It's three against two on the queen side. It must be winning. The computer confirms that it's winning. Why keep the rooks on? And potentially, you could then blunder yourself with the rooks on the board. So I think I made the right decision. I exchanged rooks. And we got something like this. Uh, this is where my memory starts getting shady. Yeah, and I can't remember if he played h5 here. He went bishop. I can't actually remember if he played bishop g7 in this exact position. I think he did. But I think he played like king d5. At some point he played king d5 and just and just lost the tempo. But this is around about the time when my memory starts becoming shady of the actual game and the actual moves that were played. Uh, but essentially I went on to win the game. So at some point I'm going to try and do a separate video and show the rest of this game. And I'm also going to uh, show in that particular video potential improvements that the computer pointed out on my analysis. So I hope you enjoy this analysis video anyway. This is the first video on my channel. 
and obviously there will be follow-up videos to this particular game.